Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. So the rate at which GGML progress has been happening in terms of running LLMs like Llama and Falcon on Apple Silicon has been incredible. And it's just been getting faster even in the past week. So I saw something really cool on Twitter today and I figured I would share it with you all. So this might seem like kind of a weird thing to post or a weird thing for me to make a video about because it's partial progress. It's not a finished model. And a lot of times for people who aren't super technical, this kind of thing isn't that exciting. But I think there's a lot to dig into here, just in terms of progress and just in terms of how much progress has happened in the course of maybe two or three weeks. So this comes from Tom Jobbins, known as the Bloke AI on Twitter. He's one of my favorite aggregators who really goes for lunking in Hugging Face and finds meaningful content and meaningful papers that represent true progress, which is actually getting kind of hard these days because of all the researchers that are just publishing stuff in Hugging Face because they know it gets more clicks if they do, even if it has nothing to do with AI. So that said, let's get into it. So what this is, is a evolution of running the Falcon 7B, more importantly, in essence, the Falcon 40B LLM purely in GGML. Now, this isn't specifically on the CPU cores or the GPU cores or the neural engine, but this is running with PyTorch and um, doing it all on Apple Silicon, which is the entire point of GGML. And the progress that's happened with this is kind of crazy. And although there isn't a demo yet, technically speaking, uh, in the notes of this and in sort of the process of the developers working through some issues and some blockers, they do allude to the fact that it is now in limited ways possible to run Falcon 40B on Apple Silicon and not the M2 Ultra, like the M2s you can buy right now, which is kind of crazy. So all this is happening in GitHub and I will link to this below. So what this is, is someone saying, initially I have added a, sort of a new novel way of running Falcon 7B and I gave an example. So in the developer world or the software world, this is kind of how you show your work and get people to take what you're doing seriously. So this is uh, basically a fork of Falcon and its implementation in GGML, which is this Gigier Granov master branch. And it actually started from some work that was being done with Llama. So the developer who worked on this mostly is a page 43 or page 43. Curiously, he did a bunch of Erlang work prior. And if you look at his GitHub, he's clearly doing a lot of meaningful work on LLMs because here you can see he's done work with Nomic, GPT for all, um, Llama, here's you know Falcon, um, here's this most recent work. And yeah, so clearly he's pretty active and is someone you should take pretty seriously. And the dates here push back about two weeks, but I'm going to highlight some of the more interesting bits. So what's interesting is he talks about the biggest blocker here being this ggmail repeat function. And in a rough way, he alludes to finding a sort of hacky way of um, caching and improving the way that this model reaches into weights, gets what it needs, does some computation, and then gets a result. Um, that is a grossly, like wildly overdone abstraction as to how a lot of these LLMs work. But um, from a hardware perspective, a lot of it is just how it's reaching into memory, how much memory it's using, and then what it's using that memory for relative to the work you're getting done uh, and the output, which is you know text or prose, what have you. So uh, th one really important thing to note here is that the scope of 40B on M2 and Apple Silicon right now is incredibly narrow. So the idea, again, that you're getting the full scope of the model or the full capability in a broad sense, that is limited when you're running on M2 still. However, the fact that it's even possible is really, really impressive. Or the other GitHub user that's kind of important here is um, Jay Plosky. And this is one of the first instances where they say, yeah, like this is actually kind of working. So he references some other work that he did on 40B and basically here, I think, yeah, this, this is pretty good. So it says, you know, he did some formatting work and more experimental support for Falcon 40B and 7B. The title here is a little misleading because most people would look at this and say, oh, it's just Falcon 7B, that's not very impressive. But the important thing is the model for accessing memory and actually addressing weights that have been uh, tuned for GGML has been modified and then someone tried it with 40B and it kind of worked. So uh, Jiplowski here says, uh, after making my head nearly explode several times, which as a developer, that's a relatable uh, thing to go through. 
Uh, it says, I've reached a point where it generates okay sounding prose from the Falcon 40B mini Shakespeare model. So this is the form of Falcon 40B that was actually working. Uh, but it does not match the Python version output exactly as it should and as it does for the 7B version. So it's not perfect. It's still very much a work in progress. The main obstacle seems to be that I'm unable to make ggml repeat broadcast multiple keys like the K equal, basically like, like this torch. Right now, the performance and the output is not predictable, which in theory, if these are tuned properly, if you give them the same prompt, you should basically get almost the same thing out every time. Uh, he also says another big problem is I only got the query matrix to look like the original Python one through some brute force offset calculations and copying of sub vectors. It probably won't scale at all. I'm under the impression that what needs to be done there can't be done using just reshaping or view operations. The memory format as stored in Python and written by the conversion script seems to be very difficult to work with in ggml. So again, the, the biggest complexity with ggml at this point is how weights are stored, how they're addressed, and then how quickly in hardware you can actually access them. So this, the speed ups we're seeing now are, you know, they're not simple, but it is basically within that problem space. And here we have an example. Uh, so this is kind of cool. This is literally um, Falcon 40B mini Shakespeare running and then giving us this output. So of course it's not really that impressive, right? But we still got this with Falcon 40B running on an M2. And here he says with some more tweaks, committed here. So he's actually showing his work. This isn't just like someone getting on Twitter and saying, look what I got to work. Um, he says, I now have a version which works with all Falcon mini Shakespeare models I've unleashed upon this world, both 7B and 40B configs, at least in 32-bit, haven't tested quantized yet. So basically that would be a smaller version of this. The remaining problem is the for loop based splitting of query heads, which I suspect is going to blow up with a real big model either being slow or exceeding the max number of tensor around 4,000 allowed by ggml or both. And basically um, those query heads, th that's basically the, the number of processes you can have digging through memory at once. And uh, this max number of tensors is actually kind of a hard limit in hardware. This is not a, necessarily a software limitation, which means it's hard to solve. Um, there is a fair bit of extra work shown here, um, but most of this is very technical documentation, again, trying to get around this ggml repeat issue. And if we go to the bottom in real time, um, they're, re they're ready to merge it. Um, effectively, what they've ended up here with is a new version of ggml, so they're calling it ggml repeat 2. And Basically, this concept is called um, MQA or multi-query attention. And this is what they're calling this new means of actually querying memory and is roughly how it is even able to run on ggml on M2. And uh, yeah, that's why this is actually on ggml, um, at least in the tree for Falcon B. And again, this might seem really boring and let me know in the comments if it is, but this is how progress is made. And this is how we end up eventually getting to the cool, um, you know, demos where there's like a cool terminal and someone doodling around with an LLM locally on the Apple Silicon. So I'm gonna link to all this in uh, the description below. If you learn something from this, uh, let me know in the comments. And again, if you like our content, please like and subscribe. It means we have to make less YouTube shorts that some of you seem to kind of not like. Uh, but anyways, we'll see you in the next one.